to watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. Welcome, I'm Nidhi Kumar and we make an honest endeavor today to discuss efforts undertaken by the government and partners to alter the nutrition and health landscape of the country by discussing the celebrations and next steps announced on the World Food Day 2020. Let's have a look on this report. World Food Day is celebrated to mark the anniversary of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization that was established on October 16, 1945. It is not just a celebration, but it also creates awareness about the existing problems of obesity and malnutrition due to hunger. The world's second most populous country and the fifth largest economy in the world India is home to a quarter of the world's undernourished people. Fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, Government of India along with World Food Programme is taking many steps to tackle the situation. Under the Chairmanship of Honourable Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare India, Dr. Harshwardhan, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India celebrated the World Food Day 2020. The theme for 2020 World Food Day is Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together, Our Actions Are Our Future. On this occasion, FSSAI launched two challenges. One was the Eat Right Creativity Challenge for school students in two categories that is poster making and photography competition. And the other was the Eat Smart City Challenge in partnership with Smart City Mission and the Food Foundation. It promotes environment of right food practices and habits in the smart cities of India. Various books were also launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on World Food Day. A book called Do You Eat Right was launched that simplifies technical concepts on food and nutrition. Another book called The Orange Book was launched under the Eat Right Campus Initiative to serve as a resource guide for implementing the mandatory food safety and hygiene requirements in campus canteens. FSSAI also launched a handbook, Daily Recommendations and Food Fortification that will provide answers around food fortifications and average consumption of micronutrients in a regular diet. Apart from this, the Food Safety and Hygiene Guidelines was also issued for safe reopening of school canteens. It includes tips on personal and environmental hygiene. Due to the unprecedented challenges being faced on account of the pandemic, there has been a renewed focus on food, nutrition, health, immunity and sustainability. In view of the global pandemic, World Food Day's theme called for global solidarity to help all populations and especially the most vulnerable to recover from the crisis and to make food systems more resilient and robust. So today we will talk about food, nutrition and health. Joining me in the program with us today are Ms. Inoshi Sharma, Director SBCD and FFRC FSSAI, Ms. Inoshi Sharma, Director Social and Behavioral Change and Food Fortification Resource Center, is a civil servant and officer of the Indian Revenue Service. Her current assignment at FSSAI involves leading the Eat Right India initiative and extending support to scaling up fortification across the country. Namaste and welcome, ma'am. 
Uh, joining me also today is the very eminent Dr. Bani Tambar Eri. Dr. Bani Tambar Eri has done her BSc Honours, Home Science and MSc, Food and Nutrition from the University of Delhi. She did her PhD in Nutrition from the Faculty of Science, University of Delhi, and she has joined the Institute of Home Economics, University of Delhi in 2004 as Assistant Professor in the Department of Food and Nutrition. Namaste yes, and sir. welcome, ma'am. So my first question to you, uh, Enoshi ma'am, what does World Food Day hold importance, especially as far as FSSCI is concerned? Please explain. So FSSCI is the um, apex authority in the country which looks after food safety and hygiene and also ensuring wholesome food availability to all people. The World Food Day is, you know, a recognition that how food is grown, how does it nourish us? And how can it ensure that it is sustained over a period of time so that future generations also get healthy food? And FSSCI is constantly endeavoring in creating this awareness among consumers, among the suppliers, which means the food businesses, as well as the citizens about the importance of food safety, hygiene in the food chain, as well as eating healthy food, which nourishes us and also is good for the planet. That means it is sustainable. So this is what we are um, constantly working on. Now at a very micro level, it also means that we have standards in place according to which you know food is um, created or it is produced. We have uh, regulations, which means that food business operations or producers or the businesses when they are working, make sure that uh, they follow the regulations as per the FSS Act. And also whatever is being imported into the country, food items which are being imported also follow those standards. We have a vast network of labs um, which ensure that, you know, the food is tested from time to time so that the quality assurance is there. And lastly, we are constantly working towards social behavioral change among people to opt for healthy food so that the food that they are eating nourishes their body and they can avoid NCDs or non-communicable diseases which has been on the rise both among the urban and the rural population in the country. So these are the uh, four or five areas where FSSAI has been working. And uh, the World Food Day is therefore a recognition of this effort that we make um, and a celebration of what we are doing. Absolutely. And it's doing tremendous work. Uh, Bani ma'am, I want to know you, how does expertise in the area of food nutrition get support from FSSAI? So, right. So, as you know, she just mentioned that, uh, you know, India is, uh, you know, we are facing the double burden of malnutrition, as we call it, where we have uh, undernutrition on one side and we have overnutrition on the other side. And in between, there is a lot of micronutrient malnutrition, which is happening. The heart of the Eat Right India campaign is to provide uh, safe, wholesome, nutritious meals to each and every individual in the population. So what uh, FSSAI has done is that it has provided us a single platform where, uh, uh, where organizations which have experts from the area of nutrition, dietetics, food analysts, public health experts, doctors, and even chefs we have all sort of combined and converged at one point. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, if I am talking about uh, consuming uh, less trans fat in the diet, and I'm trying to tell this message in various platforms in various ways, so I'm connected. So these experts are sort of connected to a huge number of other populations. So doctors have their patients, dietitians have their patients, professors have students to go on to, chefs have their consumers, food industry people have their customers, so the idea is to percolate this message in simple way to the entire population so that they become aware. So it is, it is the customer or the consumer who wants and demands healthy food. We are no longer working in silos. We are converging all our expertise at one platform so that we all benefit out of it. So before we go on to the other question, my question to both of you would be, I'll start with you, Inoshi, ma'am. As the pandemic rolls out, uh, what I have seen is, you know, when you had the 1990s, you had this breakfast revolution where our tables were cluttered with oats, pumpkin, cornflakes, all of that. And then come Wuhan virus and you're looking in your shelves for neem, haldi and all these things. So how do you make that a part of the eating habit? Because people are not really eating outside. Again, they've started, but for a very short while as we have another variant in place as we talk. 
So actually the COVID-19 did, you know, um, help, um, I mean, in a, in a very different sort of a way, you know, uh, this awareness among people about immunity, about yeah. health, eating right, nutritious food, something which uh, uh, we were trying to, you know, encourage people to do, but it became something that, you know, people wanted to do. So all the things that you've talked about, neem, haldi, or any of our traditional spices. Amla, anything. Exactly. This is what we've been trying to tell people. Eat local, eat mm -hmm. seasonal, eat nutritious food, a balanced diet. Don't run after fads. Don't run after a particular diet. Eat everything moderately. Listen to your body. Eat mindfully. Now, the pandemic is something uh, you have no control over it. But if you are ensured that you are not having some sort of a disease already or your organs are not weak, you've already built up a good immune, immune system. Even if you do have it, it's very easy then to fight it. So for this, you need to work now. You have to start eating right, right now. It's not something that I do seven days and then I forget about it. I have to keep doing it. And for that, you have to make sure what is the environment in your house. What kind of food things are you bringing in your house? What are you giving to your children? What are you eating yourself? Similarly, when you're going out with friends, are you eating food just because it's like the in thing or it's fashionable? And it's not fashionable to have your dal roti chawal, but it's more fashionable to have some sort of food which is high in salt, fat and sugar. So we just need to be aware of that. So I think the COVID-19 has brought about that shift among people in India. Absolutely. Would you like yeah. to add something? Yeah, definitely. So what, what is being said is absolutely true that people who have had a robust immune status, they, uh, they one, they will contract the disease less. Two, if they have contracted, it will have lesser repercussions, complications will be less, recovery will be faster. But also I would like to add that, you know, immunity cannot be built in a single day. So what I've heard of people is consuming loads and loads of amla, loads and loads of haldi. <laughs> so, you know, it's not just that I have consumed four oranges today and my vitamin C status is improved and tomorrow I have a good immune status. So it's, there's no magic wand around it. You have to really work on your immunity. But yes, COVID has taught us that our traditional wisdom is, is really nice. We need to get back to that traditional wisdom. So uh, our masala box can and can work wonders for us. So these traditional herbs, which we have gotten back to, we have realized the importance of these traditional herbs and uh, food spices. So they have helped us in bringing forth our, uh, you know, the, the fact that we need to be strong from inside. Also, I would like to add is that, you know, we, we shouldn't be going in for uh, synthetic micronutrients which are available, which people are literally going into now, uh, because they, uh, they may not be, uh, you know, in the right proportions that you just can't consume, say, vitamin B or vitamin C or vitamin A. Uh, wholesome food, wholesome meals, what we call the traditional Indian thali. Which, is ha which has chawal and roti and dal and sabzi and, you know, dahi and some uh, salad is the best. So it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a lifestyle which you need to, uh, you know, change. And that, I think, has been brought about. And as Inoshi mentioned that we are also, you know, very worried about what the food fads are, especially the youngsters. And that is what we need to target that population because, uh, when, you know, once one feels that disease is not going to strike me or disease takes... And, and especially the non-communicable diseases take a longer time uh, for them to be propagated in the body. So therefore, building good immune status and nutrition has a very, very important preventive role. And if we realize it now, I think it's going to work best for us. And on this note, we're going in for a short break. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll talk more on how to alter the food and nutrition landscape of India. विज्ञान तथा प्रौद्योगिकी के प्रति लोगों की रुचि जगाने के उद्देश्य से साल 2019 में इंडिया साइंस चैनल की शुरुआत की गई। विज्ञान और प्रौद्योगिकी विभाग द्वारा शुरू किया गया इंटरनेट आधारित ये विज्ञान वेब चैनल विभाग के स्वायत्त संस्थान विज्ञान प्रसार द्वारा संचालित किया जा रहा है। इस चैनल पर विज्ञान पर आधारित डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज, ताजा विषयों पर स्टूडियो चर्चा, साक्षात्कार और हर आयु वर्ग को आकर्षित करने वाली विज्ञान लघु फिल्में और साप्ताहिक कार्यक्रम प्रसारित किए जा रहे हैं। सोशल मीडिया और इंटरनेट की पहुंच आज हर जगह हर व्यक्ति तक है। 
ऐसे में देश में वैज्ञानिक चेतना के प्रसार के लिए ये माध्यम सबसे उपयुक्त कहा जा सकता है you're watching india science and we're talking about food and nutrition and how it impacts all of us especially during the pandemic days so you know shiva i want to ask you what is the eat right movement by fssai if you could elaborate on that the eat right india movement by fssai is just like the word says how can india eat right and um, what what is really amazing is that it is not simply the verb of eating right but it is actually based on three pillars Mm. eat safe which means food which is not safe is not food so you maintain safety mm. and hygiene across the food chain mm. the second thing is you eat food which is healthy which means you eat local seasonal a balanced nutritious diet a diet which is low on high, on salt fat and sugar or eliminates trans fat you eat fortified staples and generally you make sure that you've built up a good immune system and then eat sustainably which means what you are eating is not just good for your palate you don't, don't just enjoy it but it is also good for your planet which means it is sustainable in the long run so you actually try to reduce the uh, plastic which is there in the processing stage or reduce the wastage of water or even used cooking oil getting back into the food chain you try to do away with that so these are the three pillars on which the eat right initiative is based now because food is not something you know that just fssci works a lot of governments a lot of ministry a lot of departments of the government are in fact working with food so what it does it it takes a food systems approach what it means is at the national or at the macro level you try to work with the various departments or ministries in the whole of government approach so you work with say the women and child you work with health you work with environment science and technology agriculture food processing small scale industries and you try to inbuild the message of safety hygiene and nutrition there and the other is taking the whole of society approach which means you work with networks such as net profe and where bani ji is there you work with um, industry associations development partners international organizations and try to make an organic movement out of it so that people are reached out through various channels not just your traditional mediums but people are being told this information from a 360 degree approach now this approach is also really helpful because what happens is that i get the same information from different people i get the same information from school i get it from the place where i'm working i get it on tv or on radio and i also get it from my doctor so a lot of people are giving me the same message and it stays and it stays because yeah. now it's ingrained inside me mm. so the eat right uh, uh, movement uh, that way that is why it is so effective because it wants to bring about that change and everyday change into our lives you also mentioned fortification can you tell us how that's done so uh, we have actually initiated the process of fortifying five staples in the country wheat rice oil milk and salt in fact we are very soon going to come out with regulations for mandatory fortification of oil and milk which means that uh, all the oil and milk which is coming from the organized sector in the country will be fortified with vitamin a and d a lot of us indians almost 60% are having some sort of a hidden hunger which also means we have micronutrient deficiency b12 iron anemia is very much prevalent in the country both among men and women but among women and children almost 50% are anemic so um, that actually makes you very vulnerable to diseases tiredness lack of concentration a host of other such problems so when you add these micronutrients to staples which people are consuming on a regular basis it actually covers up these deficiencies so already through the public distribution system through the mdm program the icds program the various uh, safety net programs of the government fortified staples are being provided to the um, citizens of the country um so fortified staples are also available in the open market so you and i can easily purchase it in any of the um stores there's something written get. on the uh, pouch so that we you have, purchase so we have a plus f logo okay. on a fortified staple so the recognition that it is fortified comes from the plus f branding that is there so bani ma'am how does the eat right movement bring about a transformational change in society as we speak 
especially in such times right absolutely so the eat right movement has been sort of envisaged like a jan andolan you know it is like for it's for the people it's for us to figure out what we need for ourselves so we in the eat right india uh, campaign all our professionals are working towards empowering bringing about awareness in individuals so they start figuring out what is good for me mm. you don't have to be told every time that eat this or eat that and people sort of rebel on that if i know what is good for myself and if i am being told about this repeatedly in simple short messages which are doable i'm going to act on that for example if you look at uh, you know sort of reading the labels how many of us are you know pick up we pick up something we hardly read the label the maximum we do is read at the read the price or the expiry date but are we aware that there is so much more information available on that label and i can figure it out myself whether this food is good for me or not for example if i'm supposed to be restricting my salt content it's there in the label how much sodium this package has in fact it's very clearly mentioned or if you know i can even uh, figure out whether some food processing industry is claiming something that these are high in so and so nutrient or low in fat but if the label says it is high in fat and i'm able to figure out that this is not good for me and i'm not going to buy that product so it's it's just you know information which is being provided from various quarters to reach out to members of the society it could be students it could be customers it could be consumers or patients on a daily basis and they are able to make this informed choice of consumption of food which is going to help them build up their immune status and you mentioned about the current times the pandemic times here all the more important for us to figure out that how is diet going to help me in overcoming this situation so uh, the uh, the professionals who are working together uh, in the net profan they are all working together to bring about this wholesomeness in food and this consumption uh, there are chapters all over the country we have around 22 23 chapters uh, which are spread all over the country and there is a concerted effort to bring about this change so that we are able to empower the population so that they demand healthy food and once the demand arises the the the, the industry is going to provide us healthy food as well absolutely wonderful way to put it uh, ma'am i want to ask you now uh, what about the eat right challenge that was launched uh, sometime last august among the districts how do you get this going at the grassroots level say village districts and all of that it's important to spread the message right so in fact um, once the um, um, you know in- initiative had been started the eat right india cha- uh, the challenge we primarily launched mm-hmm. was because we thought that one of the ways we can scale it up is when we create this buzz among our government officials at the grassroots level of who does the maximum mm-hmm. one it creates excitement among people who are working particularly because of covid there were uh, you know there was a lot of uncertainty a lot of people were doing uh, extra work also and uh, generally to keep the morale high and obviously to you know provide people at the grassroots level proper information we thought that this challenge would be a very good opportunity to uh, do this so this um, challenge was actually open to all the districts and the major cities in the country they had to register themselves with us and there are five sections all related to um you know regulation uh, enforcement um scaling up the eat right initiatives and then bringing about social behavioral change and then we have about 185 cities and districts which have finally registered and they are all um, you know having regular webinars with us in which they share what all programs they've taken up so there's a lot of excitement what's amazing is that we've got um, districts from all across the country we've got ladakh till the south from west in gujarat to the northeast they're all participating and they've all brought about such amazing innovative activities to bring about change at the grassroots level things that you know we cannot always think about sitting here in delhi but it's amazing to see the kind of creativity the kind of innovation that we've got in this country where there are we do have challenges of resources and how people can actually use what is available to scale up things so it's been a great learning experience for us wonderful i'll ask you for some examples later but for now we're going in for another break stay tuned when we come back we'll talk more about the eat right challenge
विज्ञान तथा प्रौद्योगिकी के प्रति लोगों की रुचि जगाने के उद्देश्य से साल 2019 में इंडिया साइंस चैनल की शुरुआत की गई। विज्ञान और प्रौद्योगिकी विभाग द्वारा शुरू किया गया इंटरनेट आधारित ये विज्ञान वेब चैनल विभाग के स्वायत्त संस्थान विज्ञान प्रसार द्वारा संचालित किया जा रहा है इस चैनल पर विज्ञान पर आधारित डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज ताजा विषयों पर स्टूडियो चर्चा साक्षात्कार और हर आयु वर्ग को आकर्षित करने वाली विज्ञान लघु फिल्में और साप्ताहिक कार्यक्रम प्रसारित किए जा रहे हैं सोशल मीडिया और इंटरनेट की पहुंच आज हर जगह हर व्यक्ति तक है ऐसे में देश में वैज्ञानिक चेतना के प्रसार के लिए ये माध्यम सबसे उपयुक्त कहा जा सकता है Welcome back and you're watching India Science and we're talking about the food and nutritional landscape of India. So you know she ma'am here I want to ask you that FSSAI very recently launched uh, the lovely creativity challenge on food. So can you tell us more because our viewers would love to know more. So on the occasion of World Food Day on 16th October um the honorable health minister launched the eat right creativity ch uh, challenge for our uh, school students so primarily we thought since uh, the lockdown is all and all students are at home uh, how can we in an innovative way make sure that you know students um, in a very creative way can get to know about eating safe food which is prepared in a hygienic condition and also eating nutritious food so that they are away from you know all the processed food which sitting at home you are tempt, uh, you know tempted to have so the creative witty challenge primarily has two challenges one is a poster making the poster making is about um, eating right what do you think is an eat right uh, food or you know how do you think uh, you can eat right and then there is a photography um, challenge so you have uh, the students have to take a picture of a nice thali or some creative way in which a balanced diet can be showcased and of course anything related to covid-19 and how you can fight covid-19 so with this theme we thought that you know students can participate in it so that is what the creative how lovely i mean what a innovative thing to do and they would have learned so much while doing it and what do you think the students can do in future also and how do you think this could have impacted the students so yes i think it's a brilliant idea to involve students be it school students or students from college or other educational institutions because what we feel is that if you're educating one child this child is taking this information this knowledge to the family so you're educating one person but the entire family gets educated and in fact i go farther than this i i feel that if you're educating a girl child she's not only educating her own family she's taking it further to her husband's family mm. so the information which we are spreading and it's sort of it spreads manifold to other members of the society as well so uh, eat right challenge also has this component of the eat right campuses where educational institutions have been targeted so if you have a right food environment where Uh, the there is proper information there is proper availability of the right type of foods so consumption of food will be better now here i would also like to point out that if you know we have this concept about uh, western type of diet being harmful for us and but we forget that the diets which we consume in the indian scenario in case of the samosas and kachoris and namkeens and bhujias and papars and pickles uh, we the, they are also very high in the fat salt content and uh, these uh, foods we need to educate uh, people that these foods are also not very healthy so it's not just the western diet which is harmful many of our indian fast foods are also harmful so we need to educate and students would be the best messengers for that mm, absolutely jalebi and samosa yes. <laughs> and we're all high with that you know shivam tell us about the orange book challenge so the orange book has recently been launched by fssai as part of the eat right campus initiative of the eat right india movement so the eat right campus is a uh, is you know a concept where any workplace any tier state jail hospital a university or any large institution can become an eat right campus 
basically you create an environment where um, students if they are going to the university or um, employees if they are working for example if i go to a big corporate office or even a government office or even a t estate or inmates who are there in the jails or patients who are there in the hospitals the food which is being provided to them is it being prepared in a safe and hygienic condition second does it meet their um, nutritional requirements and third is the environment conducive there so that they can adopt healthy eating habits over a long period of time because of the kind of work culture that we have the you know stress levels that rise uh, during you know deadlines or during exams or some work pressure is there endless rounds of um, you know uh, foods which are high in salt fat and sugar may come across and how can you avoid that and maybe supplement it with more healthy and nutritious food so this kind of uh, uh, information is being provided in the orange book the first section is for the administrators of these campuses and how they can incorporate uh, you know small messages through posters at washing areas or behind the washrooms or in the kitchen area or in the cafeteria or the mess area the second part is for the employees what kind of tiffin box can you bring to the workplace Wonderful. because sometimes we run out of ideas what kind of healthy snacks can we have like we've got beautiful snacks in our country makhanas roasted peanuts bunawa chana uh, you know uh, sprouts all these kind of foods if we bring they very healthy very nutritious and they keep you satiated for a long period of time high on protein as well ma'am what would be your message to people you know how do they improve their nutritional diet and you know how do they scale all this up that is right. to eat right so so you see eating right is not so complex mm. it's rather simple uh, we follow our traditional diets we will be perfectly fine the fact that you uh, are consuming foods which are seasonal which are local uh, minimal processing and i would say not all processing is bad for example pasteurization is processing and it's making the milk more nutritious and healthy so minimal processing is what we need to uh, go in for plus you know the the change in our habits certain small changes in our habits may help in improving the nutrition for example uh, if if a person is consuming uh, say tea or coffee after meals it may bind with the iron content of the uh, of the meal and they may you know suffer from iron deficiency anemia on the other hand if this person is consuming nimbu pani or even hari chutney mm -hmm. which is rich in vitamin c is converting the iron in a form which makes it more absorbable and that may go to a large extent in solving this problem so it is just these small things which we need to modify in our daily life and the other thing which is very important for us and uh, for all our younger generation at least is physical activity routine physical activity so food yes we need to balance it out and i would say be a mindful eater follow the middle path don't don't go in excess but food also gives us a lot of pleasure so we just can't simply say ki ye khana chhod do so yes follow the middle path have an active lifestyle be stress free uh, you know have some form of hobbies and that's going to help us in achieving an overall uh, health and well being of our future generations i don't think really one uh, episode on this is enough we'll have to have far too many to bring home the message but i would like to thank you both for joining us today thank you, thank thank you. you so much for this wonderful conversation and to all our viewers we are at the forefront of bringing in social and behavioral change there is a huge amount of work that is happening in the area of food safety and nutrition and it will truly transform the food safety and nutritional landscape of india let us work together to make india truly happy and healthy and on that note many thanks for watching namaskar